description comes to bat, half crippled, can hardly walk, gets up to the plate, fouls off several strikes, works the count down to three and two, and then backs up. I just stepped out of the box and called timeout right as Dennis Eckersley went into his stretch. And even Kirk says he was reflecting on just that one little simple statement, and uh, he was uh, he was prepared for, he was prepared for the pitch. He said, "Mel, I could hear that Cajun voice of yours saying, partner, as sure as I'm standing here breathing, you're going to see a three-two backdoor slider if you get to get up against Eckersley in a pressure situation." And I'm telling you what, be ready for that pitch. Sacks waiting on deck for the game right now. Stepped in there, got it, and uh, took an ugly swing, but the ball went out. So obviously I was guided and touched by somebody bigger than myself. We weren't thinking home run. So when the ball leaves the ballpark, it is complete surprise to everybody, including the players. Hit him in the back once, hit him twice, just going to let go of him. And he said to me, backdoor slider, Joe. Oh, my God almighty. That's whew, getting chilled. I'm getting it now. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. We're all pounding hurt at home plate, including Mel and Spirit, I'm sure. There can be no greater pressure than that 50,000 people standing up millions of people watching on television and uh, he remembered exactly what I said he's going to come at you with a backdoor slider and great athletes do that and of course uh, he hit a home run and we ended up that took us right into the to the championship and we won in five games got him they've done it the ring that I put on and the memories about the ninth inning of the first game of the World Series. I will never forget that. I will never forget what Mel said in the clubhouse. I'll never forget that. How can you? It was the greatest moment in all of my athletic career. And I had some great moments at, at LSU, uh, football, and other uh, events. And, and then in scouting, I had, I've been very fortunate, very lucky, whatever you want to call it. But this by far, by far, was the greatest moment in my lifetime. I saw this kid yesterday, and I tell you what, he's a good looking kid. He's about 6'4, about 205 pounds, and he really has a good arm. This is Mel's passion, is this game. And uh, he's added so much, and I, I guarantee you he gets a lot out of it because he loves the game of baseball. He loves the players that play it. He loves the things that go around with the game, the people that are in it. He's got an uncanny awareness of what it takes to succeed in this game. And, and I hope that nobody uh, tries to chop that up with any sabermetric formula because what Mel Didier brings is real and he brings uh, a, a, a part of baseball that is going to cross generation lines, no doubt. He's an icon for many. I would like to think that, you know, people give him his due recognition. He has made the difference in a lot of individuals' lives, both on and off the field. How you doing? Doing, good. Huh? doing all right, partner. Just, just I think when people talk about scouts in the history of our game, he's going to go down as one of the top. His substance was his style. He's what we all aspire to be. He's what we all aspire to be. He dedicated to his profession. He dedicated to his family. He's dedicated to, to everything that he does. And that is a powerful thing, dedication. Partner, you are one of the best. Some of the guys like Mel Dede, they, they go unnoticed, but uh, he's been responsible for many historic moments in this game and touched many people to make sure that uh, the game remains great and goes on and lives on forever. How we doing? Doing all right? Good. Huh? Another boy. I've often said this to baseball people. They've asked me, well, when you retire, when will you? I said, if my health is good and my mind is clear, I believe I can contribute.
people think of with age and they say, oh, well, he's, a, you know, some old decrepit guy, blah, 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 blah. But I don't feel that way. I feel like I, I just uh, mentally and physically, I, I'm able to, to go longer, go harder than anybody. Okay, we'll be looking at you. Okay. All right. He That's would right. like to keep teaching and nurturing and advising as long as he can. I never tell Mel it's time to hang up your cleats. As long as I see the passion, the energy, and I know in my heart that if, if he were asked to hang up his cleats, that would probably be the end of Mel Didier. Most people wake up and you don't want to get out of bed because you don't want to go to work because they don't like their work. I like my work. I jumped up, I ran. <laughs> I ran to my work and I liked it. And uh, that kept me going and I know that, I know that uh, over the long haul, nobody could ever say that I shortchanged them because I gave it everything I had to get the player. And I've signed a lot, a lot of players in my lifetime that have been in the big leagues. I always thought that if I outworked everybody and I went harder around the next corner, I'm going to see a big league player.